Hello, my friend. Thank you for opening your mail and going to see what I've sent you today. In the next three days, I'll send you three amazing and exciting videos designed to change your spiritual and prayer life forever. There are things you can do, and you know, of course, that there are also things you cannot do. Certain things can only be done by God. Let's say you have a desire of becoming a millionaire and the only reason you want to be a millionaire is because you want to take your kids to the best schools, the best universities, and you want to contribute to the community. You want to be a blessing to the world. And so for that to happen, it'll need money. Probably you want to contribute to your church projects, church building. You want to contribute to the community in helping, developing that community. So you want to be a millionaire. Or maybe you want um, a, 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 a healthy breakthrough. You are being challenged with sickness and disease in your body. And you know you can do so much. You can enjoy life if you're sick. The three amazing videos that I'm about to send you in the next three days are targeted to position you to pray in such a way that you will enjoy what I call holistic breakthroughs. Now, what does that mean? Holistic breakthroughs means you'll be made whole at the spiritual level, at the emotional level, at the mental level, at the physical level, at the financial level, career level, and business level. In other words, you're going to turn around everywhere and it all be smiles because your life or just be what you've dreamt of. So the next three days are crucial. Don't miss these videos. They'll change your life forever. So what will I be talking of? I'll be talking about the seven most common mistakes believers make when they pray that cause them pain and frustration as they experience a life and a season of absolutely no answers to their prayers or maybe delayed answers to their prayers. Have you been praying? Have you been trusting God and it's like God is not moving? It's like God is coming late? You know, my friend, it is confirmed that 90% of praying believers do not receive their prayers instantly when they pray. The book of Matthew chapter number 12, he says, Matthew 12 and Matthew 6, he says, while you will be praying, the Lord will answer. So God wants to answer your prayers. Actually, in Matthew 6, as he was teaching them how to pray, he says, do not use vain repetitions because before you pray, the Lord knows what you need and he wants to answer you. Why are you experiencing delays in receiving answers to your prayers? Why are you not receiving answers to your prayers? What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. There are seven common mistakes that praying people make when praying that causes them to have a life without answers. And so in the next three days, I'm dealing with those seven common mistakes. But right now, let's get to do the first two mistakes. Are you ready? Okay, so this is not going to take much time. 10 minutes to, 10 minutes will change your life. 10 minutes of depositing some spiritual principles and truth that will change your life forever. All right, so what's the first common mistake? The first common mistake people make when they pray is they lack a covenant mentality. They lack a covenant mentality. Now, when I finished school, I went to be with my grandparents. In, you know my story. My father had rejected me. And somehow, it's like my father wanted to reconcile with me. And so he called me. So I went to be with him on the farm. And so we started farming together. And after about six months of farming, we had such a huge bumper harvest. My father is like, a, you know, a chairman. So he wouldn't go into the field. But he was Anthony. Uh, go in the field and I'll be in the field sometimes six in the morning till around three in the afternoon we are farming maize beans and groundnuts and, and and after we had a bumper harvest we sold the crops I think my dad had about a million bucks that's in Quacha that's about probably um 
probably a hundred thousand dollars or so and so we were all excited and my father went into the city remember I come from a village so he went to the city for shopping to buy things we needed for the farm seed equipment and of course to buy some clothes we shop once in a year so my dad went and when he came back home ooh, I thought like a young child I just ran towards him I hugged him and my eyes were looking at the goods he brought so I was expecting to see what my father had bought for me while he opened and lo and behold, my dad gave me a t-shirt and a shirt and that was it. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I looked at him and said, Daddy, the rest. And I says, no, I am the owner of the field. I decide what goes on here and that's what you deserve. Oh boy, I was so heartbroken. Out of a million coaches, Dad, that was in the 90s, that was a lot of cash. And so my father just didn't do anything for me. I guess he was influenced probably by my stepmother. And, and she did that, you know, I, when I was going to school. My, my, my stepmother was simply saying, give him nothing. Anyway, so, <laughs> this was bad. Oh, Lord, I remember now that I laughed that, that day I cried. I couldn't sleep that night. In the morning I woke up, I went to my grandmother and I read the story and I said to my mother, I said, Mom, uh, Grandma, I'm leaving my dad, I'm going to the city. And so yes, I decided to go to the city to get myself a job. And when I started, just before I started working, I was thinking, how can I trust a stranger to pay me when my biological father couldn't pay me? And I struggled with those thoughts. But the very first day at work, everything was different. Here's what happened. The, the company handed me a contract and said, you've got to sign this contract. It'll protect you. Wow. When I signed the contract, I knew I won't need to beg, I won't need to pray, I won't need to fast. Should I work according to the contract, I will be paid. Then God spoke to me. He said, it's the same principle with my children, son. See, when you begin to pray without a covenant mentality, you will always think God may not answer you. God may not come through for you because you do not understand the covenant of prayer. Here is a deal. The word of God is a covenant word. See, when I signed a contract with my company, I did not need to beg. They were owing me now. When you come into a covenant relationship with God and develop a covenant mentality, it simply means that every time you pray, God is obliged. He is committed to answer your prayer. You understand what I'm saying? So here's a case study. David goes into the, the valley of Elah and he finds a giant by the name of Goliath. And this giant is speaking nasty things and defying the army of Israel, swearing at them and insulting them. For 40 days and 40 nights, the entire Israelite army was afraid of this man. David shows up and he looks at the man. He says, I'll bring him down. Now, what was the difference? David never had any training in war. He was not a soldier. He did not understand the dynamics and the tactics of war, but he was ready to take on the giant and bring it down. And this is what David said to Goliath. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He says, the Lord will deliver you into my hands today and I'll cut off your head. David, where are you getting the faith to overcome the giant? Wow. David has a covenant mentality. He has a covenant with God. He has a contract with God. And if God does not deliver according to the contract, David has the right to sue God. You see, once you have a covenant mentality, you'll understand covenant rights. So what am I saying? Healing is your covenant right. Breakthroughs is your covenant right. Divine health is your covenant right. Prosperity is your covenant right. Peace, joy, and love is your covenant right. Promotion is your covenant right. Well, are you saying Saul and the rest of the soldiers did not have a covenant with God? Oh yes, they had a covenant with God, but they did not have a covenant mentality. Here is the message for today. When you begin to pray, be conscious of the covenant you have with God. The covenant you have with God says God will not breach or alter the covenant. Did he say he'll answer your prayers? Yes. 
Even when you're unfaithful, he will be faithful. So what is the number one common mistake believers make when they pray? They lack the covenant mentality. It's like when you're dating a girlfriend, you cannot just go to her house and demand to have sex. She would, she would refuse because sex is not your covenant right. But if you're married to her, she is your wife, you have covenant rights and sex is your covenant right. So you want to start seeing results in your prayer. Develop a covenant mentality. So today when you pray, Go with this mentality that God will not breach the covenant. And the entire word of God, the entire Bible is the covenant. He won't breach it. So you can have your answers to prayer. All right. Did you get something? Cool.